Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Just Being Real with Esther Doombury. Last um, The last time we are here, we are talking about why ministers fail. And we looked at the topic, take it. And that's the topic I would like us to continue with today. Not only is it important to know um, why ministers fail, we need to know what we are supposed to do not to become victims of the same um, situation so today we'll be looking at how do you take aid you know we said last week one of the reasons ministers fail is because they do not take heed they do not take it to themselves the same way they take it to the flock that god has given to them even as christians we do not take heed to ourselves and one of the most important points from last week is the fact that you can sleep out you can you 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 can slip through your fingers if you do not pay attention to yourself pay attention to your doctrine pay attention to your growth in grace pay attention to your walk with god so today we are looking at how do you take it what are the things you need to do to take it our first text for today will come from deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 6 to 12 it's a long read but one of the things that happened there was Moses coming to talk to the children of Israel, telling them about what God says he was going to do to them if they obeyed. And not just obeyed, they, they lived consistently with his instruction. So he was saying that they are meant to teach their children diligently. They should talk about these instructions when they sit in the house when they walk by the way and when they lie down even when they get up these instructions should be continu continuously passed to their children and god had made so many promises to them he would give them houses that are full he would give them barns that are full he would give them wells they did not dig he would give them vineyards they did not plant they yeah. were lest thou forget the lord which brought the forth out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage and if you're going to think, if you're curious, you would ask, how can they forget? How? Oh, for heaven's sake, he brought them out of Egypt. He did a lot of miracles to take care of them, to provide for them, to, to protect them. How can they forget someone who has been so kind to them? Yes, that's one big question to ponder on. But what that shows us is the, is the, is the, weakness of of humanity there is a tendency for us to forget we can forget that god was once good to us we can forget that god did amazing things to us we can forget that god is to be feared more in as much as we talk about god being love god being jesus being your lover um the holy spirit being your friend we must never forget the fearful part of god so if god says these things i've told you continue to do this continue to do that because he knows that the human nature will forget then we can then we can we can categorically say that right now god expects us to remind ourselves of his instructions of his commandments of his faithfulness of his mercies because we also have a tendency to forget see there are two sets of people who believe they can never forget and usually end up being the ones who backslide. Number one, people who come from a church where they've been taught the word, they just have this confidence that, ah, no, I can never backslide. I can never miss it. I, I am, I've been taught. Without remembering that they can also forget. What about people who have had several spiritual encounters there's this false confidence it gives them, thinking that they can never miss it again. Now they know God. Now I know God. I can never fall. No. If God did all those wondrous things in the lives of the Israelites and they still forgot, there's nothing that says any other person will not forget. For heaven's sake, Israel wasn't the nation that was supposed to backslide at all. They had a lot of encounters with God. In short, 
It was that over familiarity with the spiritual that made it difficult for them to accept Jesus Christ and recognize the Christ in him when he came. They had seen it all. So take for instance, um, when they were in the wilderness, their fathers were supernaturally fed for 40 years in the wilderness. And Jesus comes and feeds 5,000 people and you think they'll be impressed? <laughs> okay, what about the walking on water water at all experience for heaven's sake moses parted the red sea and a whole generation thousands of people walked on dry land hmm. jesus walked on water and did peter that said should i come back in was drowning how do you think they will consider him more powerful than moses okay what about Okay, Jesus raised the dead. What about Elisha? Elisha raised the dead. He shot. El Elijah raised the dead. Elisha's bones raised the dead. Jesus opened blind eyes. Yes. Elijah was so powerful, he blinded so, soldiers, then restored their sight afterwards. So you can imagine that, for heaven's sake, what is Jesus doing that we haven't seen? What is what, who, who's this? It can't be. It should. Anyone who must be must be greater than Moses, greater than all the prophets. So this is definitely not the person that we are expecting. They are seeing almost everything that you can term an encounter. And see, you would have thought that having gone through that experience will cause them to love God and never let him go. But no, those were the things that made them get over familiar with god those were the same things that caused them to fall so some of the things that should immune us from backsliding can actually be the reason that we become hard hearted if we do not take heed to ourselves so I, I i respect you you've seen angels i respect you you've been to heaven several times i expect you you've had many esoteric encounters no problem but if you do not take it to yourself those same experiences you walk and the bible comes alive to you you talk and and you lay hands on the sea god does mighty miracles through you beautiful but beware because those same experiences that looks like you have become god's personal assistant may also be the same reason may also immune you from from following God wholeheartedly may also be like a stumbling block, a stumbling block, and then you become hard hearted if you do not take it to yourself. See, which is why Moses warned them. Moses had to warn them. He said, God has done great things for you, and He will still do more. He will give you cattle, He will give you flock, He will give you olive, He will give you the vine, the silver, the gold, everything god has done all these things for you and will do more but don't turn your back on god don't forget who god is to you as you call him my lover remember he's the judge as you call him the the comforter remember that he's also the consuming fire as you love him for being faithful to you remember he's the one who will judge all the secrets um the secret or the idle talk that we put out there don't become so very familiar with god that you soon begin to place yourself on a pedestal that causes you to be adapted when god comes to you in simple ways so you are saying i don't do miracles i don't do all those things maybe i is not talking to me wait what about you was promising god god if you bless me i will save you all my life if you give me this one billion naira contract i will i will never leave church it's a lie if you think that the blessings of god are the reasons you will not leave god the children of israel they are our example god blessed them mightily but they turned back from god many times and said baal baal was the god of prosperity and despite the fact that God gave, made them prosperous, they still went after idols. 
of the same prosperity that God gave them on a platter of gold just because he loved them. So when you begin to think that, ah, if God just blesses me with a car, it will be easy for me to focus on God. We think it because what Moses was saying is that when your heart becomes full, when there are so many things, your house becomes full, there are so many things around you, it's possible that these things begin to migrate into your heart. And when your heart becomes full, it gets harder for you to remember the God who filled your house with the good things that now reside where in your hearts. And if you do not put things where they belong, the things, God has, the things God has given you that should not be in your heart will make your heart full and you will forget God. We've heard of stories where someone buys a car and tells his family, nobody should touch my car. And if anybody touches his car, it flips and once the whole world end. But the moment there's something wrong with the car, it can't concentrate on God. It can't concentrate on things that need to be done and it's running elter skelter over over the car or whatever item it is for some of us it may even be our children so the the israelites were living in the midst of the goodness of the evidence of god miracles left right it was a beautiful experience for heaven's sake they walked in the wilderness and the bible says their clothes did not get worn out how long do we wear something and it, before you know it is gone their shoes oh my god that's amazing simply amazing but despite all that uh, just imagine what about the battles they fought all those people who came against them how did they win for heaven's sake when they were coming out of egypt they most likely the only thing that looked like weapons that they left with would have been their shovels and 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 planting equipment or you test <laughs> okay now you test so they're planting equipment because when they left that night yeah of course the the the, the, the children of egypt students have given them weapons knowing what can happen if you give a slave a weapon right so it must have been just planting things shovels, um trowels shovels and, and and just that so how then were they able to fight the nations that came against them as they sojourned in the wilderness, as they moved from the wilderness, even to the promised land, if it wasn't God that was there for them. God just gave them victories on the left, on the right. Miracle today, they wake up, is another miracle. They wake up, is the cloud, and it's, it was just, it looked like it was just beautiful. So with all those experiences, you say, I can never forget God. But I'm telling you today, if you allow even those experiences to find its way into your heart, and you fill it up and you begin to focus more on the created on the on the resources more than the source more than the creator you will forget god so how do you take it you must learn to put things in their place your job your position whether your present position or the future position you get your ambitions I, I mentioned it before, your children. See, even your spouse must remain in their place. So when you say, I have God is in my heart, followed by my spouse, followed by my work, or followed by my children, followed by my work, followed by this, followed by that. You should know that as long as Jesus, or as long as God is, is put side by side with these things, they will take the place of God at different points in your life. So nothing must be allowed into your heart. You must learn to hold everything in open hands, giving it to God, allowing God remain enthroned in your heart. Nothing else taking that place. And God can then use each one of them as he deems fit. Use your spouse to achieve his purpose. Use your children to do things for him. Use your place of work as he used the sheep for, as he used Peter's sheep to spread his word, to spread the good news. Use everything that he has given you for his purpose. You've heard of many people who didn't have children, many women who didn't have children and they, they were 
constantly in church oh lord give me children if you give me children i'll serve you and when they had children these same children was the reason they weren't attending services again what about someone who didn't have a job oh, oh god bless me the job bless, and the day god provides a job for them maybe they manage to appear in church for the next two weeks or one month and before you know it it becomes a case of it's my work my work is tasking i have over time i have to work over time i have a lot to do and god takes second place in short some of them then begin to watch clothes on sundays because they feel that there's no other time to get it done matthew 22 verse 36 to 7 jesus talked about the greatest commandment and he says love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind with all your strength and he called this the greatest commandment god is to be loved with all our powers and faculties and nothing is to be preferred to him to love to, to love god with all your heart means that to to fix your affections on him like fix it on him more strongly than on anything else and you must also be willing to give up everything you hold there at his command love the lord with all your soul means with all your life this means you must be willing to give up even your life to him and to devote it to his service to live with him to be willing to die at his command with all your mind your intellect you must be able to submit it to his will you must, if you must love his law and gospel more than the decisions of your own mind you must be willing to submit all your faculties to his teaching to his guidance and devote to him all your intellectual attainment and all the results of your intellectual efforts okay it's what about loving the lord with all your strength every part of your body you must labor and toil for his glory not for earthly achievements don't spend your life doing business doing your own business that you forget god's business god's business is your main work it shouldn't be done as when i have time by the way side also no your business is side also god's business is the main business success will reveal what things are priority to you pain will reveal it failure will reveal it lack we reveal it abundance we also reveal it some people we never knew they were proud until they had little money in their pockets and some people are so they are so broke and yet so proud <laughs> so do you cancel attending service because someone asks you to come for a business deal on a Sunday morning? Mm? No, no. Do you sacrifice God's own desires, activities, and um, laws, instruction for mundane things? So every day matters. Every little walk, every little decision you make, it matters. Because as great and as mighty as God is, he can be forgotten and that shows you the beautiful side of god that you would think that someone so mighty will ensure that no one forgets him no you can forget god in the midst of his workings in your life blessing protection provision can make you forget god so we need to take it to ourselves that we do not forget him and when people forget god they begin to lose their their god likeness it's the, the book of romans 1 verse 28 that showed shows us what happens when we do not retain the knowledge of god in our hearts so it's not like they don't know there is god but they don't retain his knowledge in their hearts we begin to lose our god likeness so many ministers will end up before god and god will say i don't know you you don't look like me because along the line in their walk with god they began to forget God. They didn't take heed to themselves anymore. They didn't ensure that God is the only one feeling their heart. And they began to lose their identity in God. 
I hope you've been blessed by this message. Until I come your way again next time, remember you're destined for the top. So keep winning. God bless you.